Uh, uh, welcome to uh, uh, another episode, um, uh, Wednesday lunchtime, of our uh, new Poetry Society. My name's Henry Normal, and I shall be with you for uh, an hour with my special guest. So this is number five of the Manchester um, New Poetry Societies, and uh, I'd like to thank the Manchester uh, Libraries uh, for uh, hosting this and sorting us out, and of course Flapjack Press, and in particular Paul Needs for uh, sorting us out. So um, the uh, been great so far. I hope uh, if you've seen any, you've enjoyed them. Um, so uh, we've um, we've got a chat facility uh, down the side. So at any point you can. Uh, get involved in the chat facility. I'm going to be doing some poems and uh, some chat and uh, halfway through uh, you'll be able to ask questions uh, from my special guest. So who is he? Well it's uh, um, a great poet. Um, he's been in Manchester a long time but you'll notice he's still got his, uh, his uh, southern accent. Um, he's very well known uh, within the community and does a lot of work. He does workshops uh, and he does plays and he does poems. I want to read you a little uh, um, description that I've got here. Tony's words dance off the page and into your bloodstream, leaving you pulsing with anger, humanity and love, which is a, a lovely way to introduce. Please welcome Tony Curry. No, nice one. Uh, that's uh, that's some introduction, Henry. Thanks very much. <laughs> wow. Hiya, Tony. Uh, <laughs> lovely to lovely to uh, have you on. Uh, now, I heard a strange thing on Radio Four this week. I don't know whether you heard it. Uh, some bloke going on about, uh, I think it was a cook or something, going on about we, we shouldn't use the word curry. <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. Uh, he wants okay. To ban the word curry. He, he says it, 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 it was uh, uh, steeped in colonialism. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, I see. Because we say curry, but well, you know, if, if you're going to have a Danzac or a Joel Ray yeah. Flake or whatever, yeah, yeah. You, but but then you, you'd use uh, words like you know for birds, you, you'd lose the word bird, wouldn't you? When you mean you know, it could be a chaffinch or it could be a very yeah, yeah, very true. For me, it's a general 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 term. term. General term. Yeah, I mean, I think that the background to the name uh, because it's not the real name, uh, no. you know. But, just to, uh, reveal that on, on there. But uh, yeah, it's it, from the first book, actually. So um, I mean, it, it's from the footballer, Tony Curry, which doesn't spell yeah, yeah. like this. But that was the inspiration for that. was like my dad used to play uh, amateur football. Yeah. And he used to wear a headband like the footballer, Tony Curry. And he had a bit of a belly. Uh, yeah. I, I don't think my dad would mind me saying that. He's, uh, he'd probably laugh. He's no longer yeah. with us. But so that was it. So it's Tony Curry, the name there. But then I sort of, obviously made it into curry the, that as it spelt like that really to be fair so yeah all oh, right yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, that, so it's, it's strange isn't it because obviously normal is not my real name uh, <laughs> although, although although um there are people in germany called normal apparently right okay uh, and there is a pop group in uh, um in a, a teenage pop group in america called henry normal right so, yeah, I don't know if they're named after me, or uh, <laughs> I don't think they were born at the time I called myself Henry Norman, but there you go. Uh, so, uh, what, what prompted uh, you to change? Uh, to, uh, change well, no, I think, I think I've got a little bit, I think I just, to be fair, because my, my, my actual name's Tony Shepherd, um, yeah. and uh, actually, um, you know, I met a, a poet, could, a very famous Shepherd's poet. Pie then, couldn't it? It could be Shepherd's Pie, yeah, yeah exactly, and, oh, you know what, why weren't you around ages ago, and it sorted me out, honestly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> takes, you back, takes you back to being at school now, isn't it? Oh, Shepherd's Pie, Shepherd's Pie. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, actually, but Mike, uh, Mike Gary, he said, you've got a great name, why do you want to change it? And, uh, and I, but I just quite like the, like the Tony Curry, I quite like the sort of sound of it, really, to yeah. be fair, you know what I mean? But it does lead to some confusion, and I think some people... To be fair, <laughs> obstinately keep calling me Tony Shepherd when I, when I get up on stage or whatever. You just go, okay, yeah, all right, whatever, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now, now you've um, you've got three books uh, yes. on Flapjack Press, which are which are brilliant. Um, the Noble Savage was the first yes. one. <laughs> I, I'm, now I love your uh, your names and your uh, but the second one had a had a great title, um, <laughs> which I've got to ask you about. Tall tales for taller men who fall well short. Yeah, it's yeah. Tall tales for tall men, not tall, like, tall, tall men. men, tall men, tall men, tall men fall well short. Yeah, I think it's um, yeah, I think because I think 
I, I, I spoke to you earlier about it, Henry. Like a big part of my life. Me, actually, I mean, I, I think as, as a poet, you're a poet, and then you you do other stuff as well. I mean, I think it's yeah. you know, uh, which is fine actually. I don't think there's anything to be embarrassed about. But I think yeah, I was, and I'm really into um, working with men. I'll be honest with you. So that's been a yeah. bit of a, my journey actually. And um, so the inspiration to all tales for tall men of four worlds short. Also, as well, I mean, it's quite deep. Well, it is very deep. I mean, sadly, my brother Wayne um, um, took his own life many years ago. And and I found myself, it's quite weird, because I kind of got into, um, I was obviously really involved in the creative arts, you know, um, the theatre and that, but I found, and, and journalism and stuff. But I kind of drifted into, like, youth work. Yeah. And and then, which I quite, I think youth work is all encompassing for, for the creative types, I'll be honest with you, because it's kind of, it kind of fits in if you, you come across youth workers. But then I found myself getting to this a young men's project, and it was very specifically looking at masculinity as young men, which I found really interesting in group work. And, and to be fair, that's many years ago. I kind of carried on. And I found myself, and, and weirdly, I've been in that men's arena for many years, and partly it's maybe down to Wayne, Wayne sadly taking his own that, life. That, that yeah. does that does come through in uh, in in your work uh, and uh, you know uh, the stuff I've seen you do uh, mm. um, uh, live and uh, and also uh, the new book. So the new book's called We Kid Ourselves. We Kid Ourselves, yeah, yeah. Uh, and again, a, a great time. Now I noticed your covers. Yeah. Like the first two were very comic. You dressed <laughs> up as a pirate. Yeah, uh, and this one's a little bit more serious and. I know, yeah. What's happened there? I, I think, yeah, I think the idea was the idea is that the, the actual cover as well to send myself up because I think if yeah. you're kidding yourself, you're kidding yourself, aren't you? Yeah. I mean, that's his whole point. So I put myself on there. Um, and that the it, obviously it's a blend of two images, uh, and then the, it is, uh, it and it's me posing probably back in the days. It, it, it's not the most attractive, uh, it's not the most attractive. I've actually, honest with you. It isn't. It isn't. But, but I like. Do you know? I like that. I, I like the <laughs> fact that you. You, you know. You, you're not. You've not sort of. Uh, uh, you know, cosmetically enhanced yourself. <laughs> that would take some doing, wouldn't it? Uh, now, um, uh, for, before we get into it, uh, can you do as a poem? I will. I will. And I do. I do. Um, I do something from uh, "We Kid Ourselves" to start off with, and this is this is called um, "There Isn't Anything Permanent," which is kind of right resonating okay. today. So. We strive in honest toil and batten down the hatches and look to a future made permanent. We try to harness the wind and lay a veneer of plastic over dust and weeds. As the eddies rise and the gates buckle, we lay sandbags and pray. But it's the impermanence that gets me. It's always been the same. We harness and stick in our flags and give great speeches about hope, people, prosperity. And we hope that the show home and the smiling kids will aid our comfort. So we buckle in, build them up, keep them out to keep us safe. But it's the impermanence that gets me, how these weeds and shit will blow up. Our technological super age is the answer to all, while our kids lose the ability to be human. And all we got to show for it is our ability to buy a new pair of jeans or a door knocker at four in the morning. And we took endless, endless garbage. And while we're attached to plastic blocks, like a whole life depends on it, like the believer who in past times would have held fast to the Bible for comfort, guidance and joy. Now it's another tablet where we never know what's going on. And what they say? Oh, really? And they sit with their feet up and their curvy air and their stick out boobs and chillax and bemoan the migrants who frankly get on their nerves and say, thinking they can escape their stuff to somehow take our stuff. I don't think so. And I think of the endless, endless plastic and the endless, endless metals and the stuffing tablets and the screens. And I think of the poor, poor buggers who put it there, whose homes and lands have been pillaged so we can be safe, permanent. But we can't ever be permanent, dummy, because we're all skin, bone, water and not much else. And the wind will blow and the dust will get in our eyes and the weeds will continue to infect our permanent plans. We are all impermanent. Our lives are impermanent. We are all. Our lives are. We are our lives. There we go. Thank, thank you, Tony. That, that's brilliant. Yeah. And uh, there's something I love about your your book uh, uh, that 
um, it's very conversational. Oh, uh, so right. it's very easy to get into, but it betrays, uh, um, uh, the, you know, it's like a stream of consciousness. Yeah, it yeah. It betrays uh, um, the great artistry that, that's in it, because mm. I, I notice the, the, you know, uh, you'll use uh, uh, language uh, that um, you you wouldn't normally use in a conversation, but you right. slip it in, and because mm. it, it's so it's so seamless, mm. um, you, you pack a lot in to mm. uh, to, a, to a small amount. All oh, right, okay. Oh, thanks for that. Yeah, appreciate that. Appreciate observation. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, so, uh, as your style, um, you know, has it always been in? Do you always sort of uh, um, construct it in that way? It's, uh, yeah, I think it's. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I've, I've come from the performance side of things first. I mean, that's where I kind of finally came from. And I think it was a case of getting your, your two, three minutes up on stage and make the most of it. And you know what I mean. And I think that was it. It was a kind of going back a long time. You know. Uh, so yeah, I think you you kind of fighting you fight your way. You, you've got to get that attention. I think mean, there's a lot of per performance stuff. I mean, you got to, and especially when you know you're doing gigs where I'm well, not being funny. People aren't really want to listen to you. You know, if you're in the <laughs> <laughs> being brutally honest. I mean, at times, you know, you know, you got you know, it's, you know, um, at times, you know, if you're out, I mean, obviously, like a lovely event like this or something, you know. But there's other times when you're in a cut of thrust of the cut of thrust, it sounds like a more than that, uh, yeah, you know, right. a pub setting or something, you know. Hey, I, I, I know, I know. I, I always remember people saying, uh, I think Lem once said to me, You've got to make it lad proof. <laughs> uh, you know, for, 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 you know, I think it's a lot better now, but uh, certainly when. Yes, now, it is. Yeah. But I think that's where it kind of comes from. And I think sometimes that stuff, I'm being very quick with that. But funny enough, now it, you also, I've, I've got really good instruction in this actually, because again, Going back to Mike Gary and uh, DK when he was alive, I saw them do a performance, and 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 it was then Rev Paul, uh, who's a still mate of mine now, Paul Stevens, and they did this performance, <laughs> a book launch uh, on this boat on Salford Keys, and it's interesting because um, Rev Paul was hammering the crowd. There was a really, uh, dare I say it, you know, a crowd that were there for a drink basically and not listening. And, and Rev was coming at it like, blah, 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 you know, like so, and they people turned around. There's a, a lovely lady called Pam Leeson. I don't remember Pam Leeson then. Um, lovely, lovely lady. Yeah, in, I'm not in, not in, on the scene, message back a long time ago. And she was very quiet and went really softly. And actually, everyone had to listen. You know what I mean? So there's a, you can mess around if you can kind of come softly. Well, you well, understand that? I like about, about yours because, because you, you don't go for shock tactics. No. I, I think you do a lovely thing in that. Um, you you want to change things. I can, I can yeah. throw out your poem. Yeah. But rather than um, shout head on, yeah, uh, you talk it through. Yeah, cheers. Yeah. And and I like that because because I I think uh, as you say, people have to then to listen to it because mm. it's reasonable. Uh, and uh, you know decide whether they want to go along or not. But at least they listen. Whereas listen, listen. Enough, if you if you get that rhetoric thing, uh, yeah, of, of shouting. Yeah. Then uh, people don't actually listen to the words. So, no. So it defeats the object, really. Yeah. I think you're right. I think you're right. I think it's creating a hole, isn't it, for people to come into. I think you're right. Yeah. And I think it, I think if people, if you get someone's attention, it's beautiful. I mean, if it's just one person, you know, you know, just listening to you, it, 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 you know, you're blessed, aren't you? If someone's actually taking time to listen. You and know, I think it, it's the greatest compliment when you think it about is. it. Because, because um, we are we are actually um, we, we've we've actually got a limited time. It, it's it's the most limited resource. Time. Yeah, yeah. We, we only get a certain amount of uh, of time on the earth. So yeah. to, somebody to actually spend time with you, I, I think it's um, it, you know it, it it is the greatest compliment. It uh, is totally without a shadow of doubt. You know, yeah. and, and, and I'm I'm thinking I'm going to do a gig on Friday uh, mm. in Brighton. And mm. I'm thinking, there's people going to put their life at risk, yeah, to come and watch me, yeah. Uh, um, and uh, that there's some responsibility, that isn't it? When you think, gosh, about when it. you put it like that, yeah, definitely, without a shadow of doubt, yeah. No, it's uh, I, I, I tend to use um, uh, a little bit of persuasion uh, in, yeah. my, in my poems. I tend to try and use a bit of humour to get people, yeah, yeah. <laughs> To take note, um, I'm going to read you a poem um, called uh, "The Devil Wore Primark." Uh, um, I, I was thinking about I was thinking about uh, um, uh, you know how we uh, how we uh, um, view people. There's an old saying in there that um, if if somebody's coming, the big I am. Yeah. Uh, you just picture them without the clothes on. 
<laughs> yeah. I mean, and it yeah. brings, brings them down. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But this, this is based on that theory. Anyway, yeah. the, the devil wore Primark. Yeah. Farage in flip-flops and bikini sounds formed. Trump in a sombrero soaking up the sun. A sad in a onesie knitted by his mum. Kim Jong-un sucking on a bong. Wearing fairy wings, tiara and a thong. If you are a reflection of the clothes you've chosen, picture the old of Isis dressed as Elsa from Frozen. <laughs> Al-Qaeda in chunky cords, crop top capes and crocs, Putin in a posing pouch, pom-pom and pop socks. <laughs> All these fear mongers would fail to alarm us if they appeared in your mind, dressed in Peppa Pig pyjamas. <laughs> That's brilliant, that, mate. Yeah, it's fantastic, that. Yeah, no, I think you're absolutely right. <laughs> if you could do I, I, I think it's funny, isn't it? When you get to get people that are so powerful, uh, the only thing really to do is to is to bring them down. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, uh, through, uh, you know, uh, through humanity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think you're totally I, I, right. I, I do love in your poems the the humanity shines through and, yeah. and i know um both in a, in a world sense because i think yeah. some of the poems are about um uh you know climate change yeah and yeah. World events yeah and big issues and then yeah. other things uh, uh, that you do are on a very much a one-to-one -one personal mm. basis. and you were you were telling me that uh, um as, as you mentioned earlier at the beginning that you um uh, you're involved with uh, uh, social work aren't you and uh, yeah well yeah in a sense yeah i mean it's like yeah you know what yeah yeah social work yeah cool so yeah i mean as i say i like this work with men so i've kind of gone from doing youth work yeah. and i'm working with adults now so um yeah and so well, once upon a time tony uh, people would have a, a shed or an allotment and then they just bugger off there, wouldn't they? I know. Well, this is the thing, you see, because I think this is, I mean, it's, I'll get asked to, because I've, you know, asked to, that, that, that big question, how do you get men um, out their houses? And how do you get them, how do you get them to like, not, you know, just to kind of engage? Because it, they, 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 you know, I mean, I'm speaking as a man myself, but, you know, we're buggers, we really can be, you know, I'm quite, I'm all right going out and about, I sort of said, you know, but not that men are, put it that way. So we've got, a, yeah, we've got a shed. It's not a shed. It's um it's a unit up in Rosendale in yeah. Whitworth. So we've had it for a few years, and it basically was about come in, just come in, you know, get out of the house, and and we, we even though we put on the activities like you know woodwork and all that gardening and the rest of it, uh, model railways. We've had that before, plastic oh, yeah, recycling. Yeah. Uh, but actually, what men really want to do is sit down and have a chat. Believe it or not. Yeah. But here's the thing I found. Uh, this is why football is so popular. Oh yeah. Is you never sit down. I mean, you and I are facing yeah. each other, but we're yeah. you know we're we're yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. we're over Zoom. Mm. If we were in a room together, right? Chances are, what we'd be doing is we'd sit next to each other. Yeah, we both look in the same direction. True. It's one of the lovely things about, say, watching telly or watching yeah, TV yeah, or something, uh, or gardening or whatever. Yeah, you're not directly opposite nah. each other. You're nah. side by side doing nah. something. Yeah, I think as as I recall, that's more comfortable. Well, then you know what, Henry, you're absolutely bang on actually. Because going right back to I did run some training this whole men stuff many years ago, yeah. and they said actually to get this is young men to talk and that actually a good thing is like a, like an evening when you're on a minibus taking you know and it might be someone sat in the front, a lad sat in the front, yeah. staring out, and you're right, you're not making eye contact, and that's when you can have those big conversations a bit. If you're trying to step there, you say directly straight on. Yeah, no, you're right. That's a good point. Some people, my, my son who's autistic, he finds if you look directly into his eyes, he, he finds that a little bit intimidating. Right. Uh, if you catch him, uh, you'll be okay. And if he if he volunteers, it's fine. But uh, certainly when he was younger, the, the it, it was almost like an intrusion. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think, I think uh, you know, there's maybe a lot of people who've, who've got that, that they feel uh, confronted. Yeah. If you're... To the side and yeah and, and some of the best conversations i've had with my dad uh, uh my brother dave uh have been watching football yeah you, you, you don't actually talk about football no nah. you talk about loyalty integrity yeah. you talk yeah. about uh, uh perseverance you yeah. talk about all the qualities that you know that are worth uh, sort of uh, you know talking about yeah but you, you use the football as yeah a, uh, you know, as a sift. Uh, as a sift, yeah, yeah, as a, bit of a, as a thing, yeah. No, I totally understand that. I totally get that. Yeah, it's interesting that. That's really, really well said, though. And I think there's that working thing, isn't it? I think there's that thing that's, I think, we, you know, if you put a task to it, like 
are meant to come into the shed. Oh, we, you know, the pretext why we can yeah. make this that and the other. And that's the kind of, yeah, oh, what's it about then? Oh, I'm doing something then. All oh, right, okay, I'll come in. You're right, yeah. yeah and then yeah, on the other side, like, you have those chat. Way, you just got to get them in a the room and, yeah. and give them something to look at. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, curiosity will do the rest, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah. I, I, I'll take me out of to you for doing that and is that something you've been doing for for a few years now yeah i've been doing it for, i've sort of um yeah i've said a lot of youth world young men which i loved actually uh, and like we did loads of creative projects to a lot of a bit of fit to work with them and stuff like that and yeah. poetry as, and all sorts of as i mentioned at the beginning you've you've written plays yeah 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 playwriters well so we did a, a, a again i did this pro, a play called uh, the teddy bear so that was based on a men's uh, a, a storyline of a young father uh, father would go, you know, come into that sort of transition, and, and but wanting to kind of go out of his mate still and stuff like that, and, and being pulled into sort of where, where does he go? And that was written in sort of first drama and performed in Manchester Contact Theatre. Also, did another play around alcohol as well, and it did a lot of workshops for young people around drinking alcohol and the impacts on them and their own experiences and sex and relationships. Done stuff on that as well. Done the plays with that as well. So yeah, it's, it's great material. It's, uh, it's good material. It's good, it's good resource actually. Yeah. Now, now, this latest book, it, it spans a few years, doesn't it? It does, yeah, it does. And it was quite a hiatus, I think the word is, I think, between, yeah. between books. Which is quite surprising, because you, you, you're you very active. I know, I think I just went, I don't know what happened. I think I kept on saying, I've got a book coming out, I've got a book coming out, I'll get on it, and I didn't actually get on doing it. I think that's the yeah. simple answer. Well, let's have another poem. Right, OK. So... Um, so do you want stuff from the new book or exclusively? Or should whatever I whatever you to... like, you share with us. Whatever. Yeah. You like. All right. Well, I'll, I'll, um, I was thinking because talking about the men stuff. So that that this is the the, uh, the second book. So that was Tall Tales for. Now show show that cover. Yeah. There we go. That's me as a as a as a pirate. So yeah. we had this idea. We had this great photo shoot in Heaton Park in Manchester. Just I've got a few. The idea was that we got. Um, because one of the things I've kind of stumbled across is like science, really. That I, I at a time, just had. Well, I've got two daughters and I've got a son now. But I've got, at a time, just had two daughters, and I, I looked at my mates, and we all had, went on to have girls. And given the whole kind of like, we, uh, actually, what I basically worked out is girls are cleverer, and women are cleverer in some way. So I uh, kind of. <laughs> like, but at least you're clever enough to recognise that. That's the main. Clever enough to recognise that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so the idea was the on the photo shoot, I got yeah. guys who brought on their daughters actually um, for the photo shoot, and then we were dressed as pirates as the men. We just we had a great. So in the book, there's great images actually. It was just sort of playing games and hanging out and stuff like that. It was it was a really good day out. So anyway, from the um, from the collection, I thought I'd do. Um, this is called Comic Book Heroes. My life is made up of comic book pictures of tough of the track who battled on with no shoes and only a fish and chip supper to see him through. My life is made up of comic book pictures of Henry's cat, rhubarb and custard, the absurd, the surreal, the best. My friends are really comic book characters. Damo is big, large than life. He speeds about full of profound nonsense and tangents that do meet as he searches for the next episode. Wayne saw the world in comic books. He was Roy of the Rovers, saving the day with a boyish grin, an attractive girl with flickish fringe in the last frame, and he'd wink out at us. Dad lived his life as a comic book character. His life is picaresque, batting on Middlesex fields, trials for Brentford, his geometry set. Later, he'd be the jaunty sailor who would drink and sing and get smacked on the back as he told yet another tale of other comic book characters, and all would laugh. And Mum was a comic book character, the pretty girl who left Cape Town, smiling as she made her way down to Brighton on the push bike from South London for something to do. I want my life to be a comic book. I want <laughs> funny episodes and observations to put in between strap lines where stories are embellished and fantasised and downsized. I'd love to go down in a howl of bullets, sapping and fighting with my damsel in distress draped over my arms, out of the fire. Tony Curry, hero. <laughs> Another week, I'd hurtle into protests on a motorbike like Steve McQueen. I'd jump over coppers and set the people free. 
Now that would be a delight to see next week, price 40p. So I realize I'm happy living in comic books among dreamers and flight seekers who faint just in time, like me. And this is really a message to our girls where we want to say, we don't mean no harm, we're just a bit daft. And girls are the future. But please remember who we were and where we came from, where it seemed the world only wanted us to graft and fight when it chose or desired. Oh, how the comic book, because we've only had dreams and our comic book characters. That is beautiful. Thanks. Uh, thank you. That is beautiful. And I, I love, you know, when you, you can pass so many people in the street uh, mm -hmm. uh, and you, you know so many people uh, in an official role. Mm -hmm. And I think it's easy to forget that, you know, um, there's a difference between existing and living. Mm -hmm. uh, and, the, you know, we, we live don't we, in, in, uh, in our heads and in cre the creativity and uh, mm -hmm. in stories. And, and I love that. that that's, that's, mm -hmm. that's a beautiful thing. That. Thank you. Cheers, Henry. Appreciate that. Now I'm going to open up the uh, um, the chat for questions. Oh right, okay. If you have any questions for uh, for Tony or indeed for oh. me? Uh, do uh, do give us a question and until we get there, uh, we shall continue talking. But mm -hmm. uh, um, tap them up. If you put question before you actually put it, then it'll draw my attention to it. Uh, <laughs> people have done that before. Um, so. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's that's all good stuff, uh, uh, Tony. So uh, tell us about Word Central because you do Word Central every every week, don't you? <laughs> well, gosh, no, no, every month, every, month, every week. <laughs> that'd be a bug, wouldn't it? That no. would be that would be up. <laughs> once a month, is that? Yeah, well, once a month. Yeah, we've been doing it a few years now. It's um, it's brilliant. I'll be honest with you. And I think the journey. I was thinking about this to get to Word Central how it came about. Yeah. I was kind of like um, I was. I was actually looking quite a few years ago. I played music as well, played the acoustic guitar. And at the time, I'd um, I played a duo with a guy coming on the harmonica melodica. And it's spoken word and as well as singing. But we were looking at just having a, getting a little venue, to be fair, to just yeah. to play on a Sunday afternoon. And then one thing left to another. And I met a guy called, we in that search for a venue or something, a guy called Dave Ruffmouth, or Dave Ruff, who's a, he's a hip hop guy. And a good mate of mine and we end up but basically we end up putting on a night together in a place called jam street in wally range it's called it was called word jam we did that for a while and then we kind of branched out into uh jam in as well we thought sort of in, in, in oh, i didn't know that i didn't know that was word jam because i've heard of word jam oh yeah that was that yeah that was us yeah we kind of like child that yeah for quite a while and it was brilliant and it was uh there was a uh a woman called sue sue lawson i think who works at the library uh central library and she used to come along and we had a tagline. It's all. It, it's a bit of a laugh, I think. Yeah, because <laughs> they always have a bit of a laugh. Um, and and she said, anyway, she. I think she had must have had a word at the library and said, yeah. um, oh, you have to get these guys in. You know what I mean? And that was it, really. I think that's how we kind of got into the library. So how long have you been doing it now? Gosh, I think Paul. If Paul could come in, it's like I think it's been three years or four years. Yeah. I, honestly, I was shocked when. Um, when I found out, it, it seemed, it, it's gone quick, I'll be honest yeah, with you. Yeah, and uh, I've seen several of them, and then they're always oh, gone. Oh, yeah, five years plus. Regulars, five, year, five years, there we go. I yeah, told you, I'm sure. You've got some regulars, you've got some uh, uh, you get, uh, new people in, and you yeah. have guests, and uh, uh, and it's great. And obviously, um, I, I've, I've uh, done it on Zoom, but you, yeah. you're live, on you? You're back doing a live. We're back, yeah. As Arnie would say, we're back. Yeah, uh, and, and uh, what, what date's that? 27th September. 27th uh, September. So, uh, if you're in the Manchester region, mm. uh, uh, you're at uh, where are you exactly? You're at, where so Central Library. Yeah, it's dead easy to find Central, Central Library. Library. Yeah, and it's it's a really great space. They've got because that Central Library. You know, Mance has just put on there. It's a great night because Mance is one of the regulars. Is here today. Hello, Mance. And, and uh, uh, you you, uh, you you've got a, a Facebook and a, a Twitter. Yeah. And, that for, for word central obviously yeah. for you, yourself yeah exactly so you, can, you can always pick up details of that definitely yeah without shadow of doubt just put in word central poetry i'm sure it will come up you know now and find oh, your way down and, and you're doing a um a, a live event for the chortle uh, uh Ch chilton chilton chilton. Chilton, chilton book festival yeah that's for the 20th so we uh, you would normally do that um in the library but uh, unfortunately down to the old social distancing and all that so we're at the a theater called the edge and that's on the uh, 20th of September, uh, which I'm looking forward to, because, uh, I mean, that will be my first <laughs> in-person gig, I think. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, hey, I tell you what, you, you know, when I'm doing mine, I've just realized it's Friday the 13th. <laughs> thinking of <laughs> right, yeah. that, that, that's not a good sign anyway. no 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 uh, but uh yeah, yeah, yeah so the edge edge theater the uh, edge theater yeah which is nice actually i've been in there actually before it should be nice and it's just great I've, we've got i think we've got fig richard and uh on with us and uh and a percy i believe is coming on as well yeah, I think it's going to be a really yeah. It's nice. The Chilton the Chilton Book Festival is a nice event. Really nice event they put on every year. So yeah, good to support okay. the local, the local. Now uh, nobody's got any questions for you at the, the moment. Well, that's fair enough, isn't it? Unless I've uh, missed them. So um, uh, let's have another poem. Right, another poem. Yeah. Okay. Well, I thought actually sort of jumping around. I go to my first first collection. Yeah. So this is uh, the noble savage. Um, so see that, that image there? There, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. So that was actually I always remember <laughs> putting on this uh, gorilla mask um, for, the, for that photo shoot in, in in the corner of our spa. So the, the noble savage was a bit of a. We well, get the idea of um, uh, the, uh, the, the the tenant of this poem really, and I do get quite a lot of, <laughs> quite a lot of. Uh, uh, People love it, this poem, actually, but it's quite provocative. It, it, anyway, you'll get, the, you'll get the gist of it. So, Return of the Noble Savage. Do I wish to live a life to a hundred, taking it easy, touching my pulse, abstinence in abundance, full of early nights, skirting away from anything which may be contrary to a healthy lifestyle? No spice, little fizz, constantly checking my piss, smug in my own smugness. Oh, if only others would follow my lead, I'd say, and the world would be a healthier, happier place. No smoking, no drinking, no drugs. Why do it? No, for me, it's all of the pressures of a sensuous, onerous oneness, full of dark pastures and unknowns, the heavy whiff of skunk smoke, my head deadened by spirits, my limbs lightened by lager. Give me smack, crack, Coke, LSD, spirituality. Well, let's see. I see nothing to envy, passive contentment. A life full of abstinence leads to a flatness. I want life. A life full of heady excess, including smacking endorphins snaked up by heady physicality. Deadened. I want life. Full of mad, curving, strange phantoms of hysterical misdemeanors leading to sequined, infected rhythms and beats pulsing to my veins, leaving me spent, hell bent on tugging the forelocks of insanity. Fluid, leavened, non content, amiable, full of a lightness, a certainty, a weight. Taking my drugs like a man. Well, who else? Stumbling, fumbling, gurgling, taking a life throws in my direction with a jaunt. Hey, man, you're out of touch, say the new liberal pink brigade who attempt to shape me into somewhere where I just don't want to go. And there lies the crux, the bubbling, gurgling of old towers. I've already gone further than the educational correction centre, achieving nothing except a stage for me, the most noblish sage they envy. I couldn't give a shit less. My focus on the ball, sweating, kicking, hurling abuse. Gonna kill the fuckers who were taught. See you outside. That most ignoble of British pursuit, full of hate, loathe, spit, but active, so active. And there lies the crux. Hate, insanity, depravity, comfy bedfellows all in one with a heady excess and couldn't give a shit less. Praise my return. The noble savage to diss the dirt on the dirt free. There we go. Good one. Good one. Mm. I, 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 I know you grew up in uh, in Crawley. Um, mm. Was it? Uh, did you find it difficult uh, growing up in Crawley? Um. Yeah. I mean. I, well. Yes and no. Really. I suppose. I mean. In terms of like uh, ethnically, I'm mean, obviously. And I was growing up in the seventies, so I mean, in mean, this age as well. I mean, it's obviously there was there was racism around. Um, yeah, but was so it your, just, your parents um, <coughs> are South African? Is that right? Yeah, your yeah, mum was born in Cape Town, and my dad my dad was white British. Um, okay. I've only just recently found out actually that I'm actually got Indian heritage, uh, East oh, Indian right. heritage. Yeah, I didn't realise, but you know, yeah. So um, yeah, there was there was that, and I, I, but having said that, it was. 
Yeah, I've, I've got fond memories of Crawley. I've got a great attachment to Crawley, to be fair. Um, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just... I, I don't, I, go how, on. Do you, uh, how do you as a young man get into poetry? How do, how do young men get into poetry? Yeah. How do young men get... Well... How did you as a young man get into poetry? Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, I got into it, really, I suppose. I mean... I was I'm fascinated by song lyrics. I think that was one of the things that kind of like got me really into like writing and you know taking it in. So so I studied like album covers like um um like the jam, you know, Paul Weller, um Billy Bragg, you know, you know, I've really sort of listened to Elvis Costello, you know, really sort of listened to it and really pour over it and really good songwriting. So I think that was that was in there, in there. And I think I didn't actually get around to writing. I suppose actually, probably, yeah, I, I, you know, it's interesting, isn't it? Because I think I live in Manchester now, which, you know, if you're not creative, then someone's going to come and tell you off, you know, like especially in South Manchester or doing something. But I mean, Crawley back then, I mean, I don't think it was, you felt <laughs> comfy. I didn't feel comfy. So I think I had to go away. So I left, I left Crawley. Um, sort of like in the late, late early sort of 1990 sort of and I went to Australia and I found when I got to Australia um actually there was uh someone sharing a house with she said she's going to toddle off to sort of freelance journalism course I had no idea to be fair I said oh, I'll come along yeah and then I I, I just got into it because there's loads of little workshop things they got you to do and I just found I could just do it because I could just tap into that mad little head. Oh, so you were you were quite late getting into. Oh yeah, I was. It was sort of like uh, mid twenties. Yeah, so that, well, I kind of got into writing. Yeah, um, and then that was the seed. That was it. Then I kind of like for the travelling thing, come back, and it sort of opened up from then. Uh, but I think I had to go away. To be fair, yeah, so <laughs> a, bit, a bit like Jesus in, in that respect. <laughs> 40, Forty years in the desert. You 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 had a few in Crawley. <laughs> Maybe so, yeah. I think you're a bit like, it's funny because like, you know, the full circle now, kind of like, I had a couple of mates who came up to Manchester not that long ago. And then uh, at a night, you know, I sort of performed and that. And they were shaking my hand and everything. And everything's fantastic. So you've had, you probably feel comfy now to kind of, as it were, come out, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, was, I started writing uh, around the age of 14, I think. Wow. Uh, uh, yeah, my mum died when I was 11 and uh, I got very introvert at that time. Mm. Before then, I was quite an extrovert. Right, and, uh, OK. And I got into books and everything and I, I sort of tried me and then. But of course, as you live your life, your your, your communications change and your yeah. uh, your way of communicating and what you communicate about changes. So it's interesting looking at some of the early poems and, and looking at the later. Mm. Uh, I'm doing a thing at the moment. My, my next radio show is about ageing. Right. So uh, I was uh, uh, looking at this process and, uh, and uh, you know, how different parts of the body age, mm. but also how the brain ages and how our attitudes uh, uh, change. And um, I asked a question on Facebook. I said, um, what's the best thing and the worst thing about getting older? And there was a lovely uh, comment back. Uh, somebody said, uh, um, the worst thing is being invisible. Wow. And the best thing is being invisible. Yeah. <laughs> Which I thought was quite telling, isn't it, when you, when you think about it? Um, because there's a sort of a thing that I think we all probably share is that as you get older, uh, um, you care less about what people think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, and uh, and it's a shame, isn't it, when we're younger that we do care so much about what yeah. we think. Yeah. Um, well, you know that they don't really. So I'm going to do a little poem from the, this is a, one of me flapjack books. Cool. Strikingly cool. invisible. Cool, nice one. I'll, I'll, I love a good title. Uh, and um, <laughs> so this is about that. It's called uh, Striking Invisible. Here we go. We reach out our arms to the unknown, to everyday adventures, to the ninety percent of self, to the other side of the atom, to passing mm. acquaintance with logic, to the lake of tears at the floor of the ocean to experience and imagination glancing, to a seemingly irrational creator. We reach out our arms to the very next breath, to hold on tight to each other and to let go of everything else. Wow, that's lovely, that. That's absolutely beautiful, that. Now, that, that's oh, funny. Wow. That's not a poem I'd have written. At I'm going to have to use that. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to get that. I'm going to get that copy. 
I'm going. I'll, I'll, I'll have a cup of coffee. I need to get. I'm going to use that. The shed. I'm going to read that out. That's mad. All oh, right. Thank you. They. They. Ah. they say so it's, it's interesting how how, how your um your your interest and and uh, mm. ideas change over the years. Now, do you see? Because you've got three books. They spread yeah. over a, a long period. Yeah. Do you see a change in yourself over oh. those years? Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean that that noble savage stuff. I mean it's quite interesting. Again, I, I mean that the no noble savage stuff. The kind of context of that that sort of poem, I mean, that was just the smoking ban had come in, you know, and the rest of it. And I was kind of <laughs> quite feisty about it all. You know, I think you are, you know, you calm down, don't you? I'll be honest with you. And I think you got to, you got to calm down. I think you got to. I mean, there's a bit of there's still some fire rebellion like to think, but I think in terms of being that sort of abrasive and stuff like that necessarily. And I think yeah, you probably more as you say. That conversational stuff that's kind of happened to me so yeah i do think there's a there's a kind of leveling out a little bit more maybe yeah yeah, yeah. No, I, I find i find that i find my curiosity uh, is wider right uh, i think when i was younger you you, you get something you were passionate about yeah you get really into that yeah you know, like yeah a band or, or yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, you know an activity and now I find, um, you know, as, as I'm just wandering around, uh, um, I'm get curious about more and more things. They, they, mm. they don't have to be within, you know, my one subject. No, 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 no. I think you're right, actually. And I think, as you say, like in the in the in the latest collection, there's a lot been open about love poetry as well. You know, and intimacy and stuff like that. No, I can. Um, I, can you can you do as one of your your more intimate love poems? Yeah, I'll, I can. Yeah, yeah. Let's have a look. Yeah. Um, Let's have a look. Because um, I, I, I do, I, I'm reading the book, there is such a wide range. It'd be nice to. Yeah, yeah, make. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I'm just trying to think of which one to do. Let's have a look at. Right, okay. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is called Whistleblower, Whistleblower Wind. Okay. Take that turn, you walt. Seize that line. Pull me in. Unravel my heart embellish that laugh and size me up to run fast into the type reducing noticeable side glances and caught once more caught adrift you held me prone captive ensnared drip your spit open my mouth false and re Plenish. Our heads lay damp. The day announced itself, thrusting light, rays, goblets, dust, hair, skin. I place my palm, soft, warm, and a smile, as I stroke and caress. My mind travels to discordant noises, shouts, screams. Pain erupts transgressed as your mind is shaped. I came with discordant voices, neglect, judged by flights of fancy, which howled and sought to bite, wreck, stop, shape, take pleasure in embalmed flights of you, wind, me. That's lovely. That oh, yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, in a way, that's that's so different. But of course, they're, they're all mm. facets of your own personality, aren't they? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's just yeah. It's just like, lovely that really. I must admit. And, yeah, and I suppose that's poetry, isn't it? I mean, that's where it's just a moment. I'm taken back to that moment. You know. Uh, you know. And yeah. And and that's life, isn't it? I mean, it's uh, at the end of the book. I sort of talk about life being about moments because my dad was always on about my dad bless him he died he died at 49 i mean he took it i think he took that phrase a bit too far actually life yeah. life is about moments but he yeah there's something about that though isn't it i mean you know it, when you think about it i think i believe it is true you know when we can especially when we kind of like we have our down days which we all have you know and you think oh, what's going on where am i at? what's happening now but if you can remember about your moments life and they, and they will come again you know what i mean so Got some lovely comments in the chat. People oh. saying that it was gorgeous that, that last. Thank week. you. Thanks very much. Thank you. We appreciate and, it. Uh, yeah, I, I, I do. Uh, I, I do love that. Uh, I think um, it's interesting. In a way, uh, say when we first start, we we build uh, mm. some of the poems because you're doing them live. Yeah. The, um, robust. Mm. And, and I think as you get more confidence, you yeah, get more 
that you can open up um, in the more sensitive side. And mm. I remember meeting, uh, um, uh, and he was quite old at the time I met him, uh, Adrian Mitchell. Oh, uh, right, okay, yeah. Great uh, uh, 60s poet. And yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. He was a poet late after the 60s, but it, it came to prevalence in the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I met him, um, and I remember him saying to me, uh, uh, John Egley and I were doing a gig with him, and we were wearing suits, and he was he was like in jeans, uh, <laughs> and uh, and uh, and I were talking about it, and he said, "It's the duty of the poet to give the uh, people something they don't expect." Mm, wow, that's a good yeah, phrase. I, I thought that's quite interesting. That, oh, yeah, that is. Yeah, that is good. And uh, uh, and uh, he was he was his own man, and he yeah. did his own thing. And of course, he had the benefit of, you know, he'd lived as a poet. Uh, yeah. For years, and uh, I, I was uh, it was a great honour to, to. Yeah, to totally. Yeah, a lot of people use him as this phrase. Yeah, it's a lot of people use him as this. But Paul Weller read a lot of Adrian Mitchell. He confesses to for his. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, it, I, I, that's a lovely thing to say. And I think, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I think that's a real, and, and I love that. So, because actually, that goes, I mean, in a way, because poetry's got, dare I say it, more popular now, performed poetry. And there is, you know, there is a thing about, which I sort of wrestle with, but sometimes, well, hang on, you, <laughs> you're going to play to the, play to the crowd, you know, a little bit. But I think what you're saying there is, is actually right, the unexpected to twist it around. No, I think that's really, really good. That really yeah, profound. I think you've got to, you've got to uh, sort of work, uh, do your own thing. Yeah. Um, I want to read you a little poem. Uh, um, my life um, has been quite sedate this past right. uh, this past year because obviously we've been, um, mm. as a lot of people, we've been shielding. Yeah. And, um, uh, and you sort of explore your inner space, don't you? Because mm. we can't be jetting up all over the place. You go a little bit deeper into your inner space. So I've got my little garden. I've got me uh, uh, my house, and uh, I've got my thoughts. And um, so this is uh, called the uh, the inanimate holds little attention. Mm. The merest breeze offers countless possibilities. Sunlight dances on long thin leaves as they lull in the late afternoon. Starling styling it out can't be ignored. Anything that can instigate its own motion draws focus. Inconsistent sound snags your attention. It's change that the senses seek, like with the movement of clouds. Even earthbound shadows, as they bend east, form a narrative. Wow, that's gorgeous, sir. That's really, I can really place, I can really see myself in that place to describe that. But in, in a way, to, to write a poem like that, uh, Tony, as I, I, I spotted with yeah. some of your poems, yeah. you, you, you can't be running around. No. You, you've got you've to be reflective. Yeah, yeah. That was a question, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. well, what's he saying? <laughs> How do the young people you work with, this is uh, Tony, uh, uh, cope with the idea that humanity might be destroying itself <laughs> <laughs> that, is a, that is a really good question I, no I just didn't have a sleep while you do that one <laughs> <laughs> gosh you know what i'll tell you what I'm, I'm conscious of this because it's a really good question that by the way and and i think um I, you know, I had these conversations even recently. I actually had a conversation with Tommy. This is my mate Tommy. He's a Londoner, right? In a car on Monday when he went to the shed. And, and the thing is, because we end up talking really the grim stuff that's going on, and you're thinking, but actually, I've got a lad, I've got Tyler, who's 10. Yeah. You know, I can't be too, you can't be too grim about it, can you? I can't blame it. You know what I mean? And I've got two daughters, you know, Diani Millie in their, in their 20s. You can't be, what's that? You can't say it's going to be. No, no, no. <laughs> my, my, my sister's got great, great grandchildren because she, she, she had a baby when she was 18. Oh, okay. That baby had a baby when she was 18. So this has got like uh, four or five generations going on. Uh, and um, there's a lot of investment, isn't there? I tell you yeah. what I looked at uh, for one of my radio shows, I was looking at um, the end of the world. And since I've been born, uh, the predictions for the end of the world there's been over a hundred of them. Right. Yeah. Well, there you go. There you go. There you go. I, I, I mean, the, the, on the plus side, and it's tell thing to say, we do live in a very sort of affluent country, a very start. And I know that's not going to save the, the climate crisis, but I mean, we are, 
you know, I mean, this is what I kind of like said about the first poem. It's like the poor, poor buggers who put things in screens. I mean, you know, across the flipping North Africa, I'm a man, they, you know, they're definitely getting it bad, you know. So, and that's not a good thing to say, is it? But I think, <laughs> I suppose we got, yeah, and they actually got a poem, which maybe do at the end or something, it's called Glasgow. And it's a, if in terms of humanity, I think that, that's where, because my, I'm really am blessed. I'm a, I'm a blessed human being. I, I recognize that. Um, and I, my, the eldest daughter, Diane, uh, she's, she's studying in Glasgow. She's studying politics and English. Yeah. Um, and, you know, she, both of her and Millie are the same. They're both really out there girls. They've really got massive social conscience. They're great yeah. connectors. They're great creatives. They're, they're, their friends are just beautiful. You know, they've got a great mindset of, of, of doing and, and everything like that. So I think that's the future. That's what I'm saying. I, I, <laughs> I think I, the future's I, right. I'm going to say, Tony, I, I've found uh, most of the young people that I've uh, come across uh, are far more soft than we were. Yeah, no, yeah. Far more proactive. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, things that we had to strive for. Yeah. You know, sort of the, uh, uh, the tolerance, shall we say. Yeah. The, yeah. You know, you and I go back to when. Yeah, no, no, totally. Uh, yeah. uh, jokes about black. Yeah. Irish jokes about yeah, yeah. homosexual. Um, now the 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 um uh, the the respect uh, is um uh, you know it, it's taken for granted that you respect people yeah uh, and I, I love that ab about the young people it, you know in in a way it g gives you hope that uh, the battles that we fought um not all of them have to be fought again no you're absolutely right you're absolutely right i mean i think you're getting this kind of backlash this kind of wokeness they kind of talk about which you know and all the rest of it but um but obviously you know I'm saying, well yes i, I mean we, we're, we're not going to ban the word curry it's strange it? I, I always find suppression of any word uh strange i always remember um uh, lenny bruce saying it's suppression of the word that gives it the power mm. uh, and so I, I think um to use the words properly and yeah. also to um you know, it, it's when you, we use words, it, it's about our um, it's about our attitude, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you can you can talk about almost anything if you're coming from it, you know, from with the with the right attitude. Yeah. I, I, obviously, uh, having worked in comedy for for years, mm. you know, you tread a line. Uh, you know, yeah. the TV comedies and films that I've made, um, and uh, always to me, it's always been about power. Mm. And, uh, you know, I, I think, um, you know, we, we need to understand, and I think probably the young people today understand a little bit better than we do, mm. you know, uh, that, uh, you know, sort of uh, balance of power, as it were. Yeah, 100%. I really get that. I really get that. I must admit, we've had our, we've had our uh, interesting, because up in, the, up in the shed, I mean, I think some of the, some of the guys question it, basically, you know, about... Um, you know, which words can you cannot use at times and stuff like that, you know. And again, it's a bit of a conversation to be had, you know, and again, it's supposed to seem from their viewpoint and I'm picking that a bit, really, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, uh, you're right We you say it's about power, though. You're definitely right. Yeah, yeah. Now, we're uh, we're coming up to uh, um, uh, to about 55. So uh, um, I know your poems could be long. So, uh, <laughs> well, I was going to do. I was going to because I was going to pick up. I was going to. I was going to end with the C, which is yeah. fairly long. Um, but I was, shall I do the C then? That's quite you nice. Can whichever one you want. Yeah, yeah. I was going to do so, the C. Uh, and then I'll, I'll wrap up and, uh, and finish off with a. With oh, a right. yeah. Okay, I'll do the C. So okay. the C is um, quite inspirational for me. And I know you live down the south coast, uh, Henry. And I used to have a, always like to get down the south coast myself. Look at the C, but the C, yeah. The C okay. is always. The sea. I'm reassured because the land and the sea will always remain. I am a speck, a speck of dust, surviving, questioning, wrestling in my nanosecond existence, but the sea and the land will always remain. We try to stamp on it, blow it up, throw in our rubbish, our stuff, but it just moves in and out. In and out, in and out, 
in and out. A tidal breath when we're asleep or watching TV or driving or standing in line or worrying or being excited or being scared or being disappointed or generally distracted. The sea will just move in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. And as I climb and drive through hills among human debris with its houses and bits meant to pacify, distract, I remember this is a land. It's always been the land and we are the people and we've always been the people. And I really don't know what there is to get excited about him or her coming here. People, I want to say, look at the land. Look at the sea. Remember, you and me are just a speck, a speck of dust. But I know not to take no notice of me. Why should they? What sense do I make to their lives with their ongoing disputes, fears, fragile frustrations? And I hear the chatter and I close my eyes and I look and I look at the sea. I look at the sea. I look at the sea. Thank you, Tony. That was beautiful. Yeah. And I share your uh, your uh, adoration for the for the sea yeah, uh, and, awesome. uh, and all its all its connotations. Mm. You know, it's been lovely talking. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm reminded of your um, your uh, men's groups, and I was thinking poetry. Really, it's just, it's just a group for men and women, isn't it? Yeah. 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 You know, so so we can all have a chat, yeah. and and rather than watch a load of football, yeah, uh, um, we read some poems instead. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna try because actually there has been that thing out in the shed. I think in you know, they gets a bit uncomfortable when you sort of do yeah. so. But I think yeah, if we could bring something, I uh, that's a really good idea. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, and uh, so, so I love it. Now uh, we we were talking um, uh, about um, the you know the progress that we've we've made mm. and. I'm conscious that there's still a long way to go. Uh, mm. uh, you know, obviously with climate, there's still a long way, but there's still a long way with tolerance to go. Yeah. Uh, and um, so, uh, although, you know, my generation uh, tried to tackle uh, all sorts of things like racism and, and sexism and uh, homophobia and everything, um, I still pick up when I'm watching the telly, there's still uh, um, things about uh, fat people. Uh, and mm. body shaming there's still things about uh, old people uh, and mm. uh, you know sort of uh, patronizing and whatever and um and there's still something which i, I find quite bemusing because it's racism by another name uh, regionalism ah, right you know yeah. what i mean yeah yeah, I, yeah 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 I, I was it very much came to a fore when i was thinking about um the uh, the you know the liverpool uh, tragedy with the uh, mm. Mm. And I was thinking, uh, it was at Sheffield, of course, mm. and um, they played Forest. Mm. And so I could have been at that match because yeah. I'm from the yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and I wondered if it would be different if it was Forest supporters and Nottingham people as opposed mm. to. Um, there is a thing that um, we typecast, whether it be uh, Tyneside, whether it be Glasgow, mm. whether it be uh, Liverpool. Um, and so it, it did strike me that there's still a lot of intolerance uh, that, that hides in, mm. uh, you know, in, in, in different ways. And, and I, at the time, uh, of course, we had all the, um, uh, the, the people trying to get into the country, as there still are, um, mm. fleeing from uh, the Middle East. Now, um, my granddad was Irish. Uh, um, uh, he came over as a baby. Uh, and when he came over, of course, there was signs up saying uh, uh, no blacks, no dogs, no Irish. Mm. So I'm very conscious mm. uh, of, of all these things. So I've, I've written this poem called uh, uh, How to Make an Underclass. So I'll leave us with this. So thanks ever so much uh, uh, for being uh, my guest. I, I love to, I'll come on Word Central when I can. Oh, definitely, to, mate. Yeah, definitely. To to there. Yeah. Uh, and um, and uh, as ever, lo lovely talking to you. And thanks for nice sharing. Nice one, Henry. You've been brilliant. And, Thank uh, you. Uh, you know, obviously, you, you're on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Catch us. Yeah, yeah. Catch us. Uh, yeah. And get the books from Flatgate. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, it's called How to Make an Underclass. And thanks, everybody, for, for listening. Thanks to the uh, libraries, uh, Manchester libraries, for sorting us out. And thanks to uh, uh, Flapjack Press and, and Paul mm. Meads. So this is uh, how to make an underclass. There is a danger 
to setting yourself apart, applying different rules, making excuses, however reasonable. Soon, you start to use phrases like these people, thinking that those outside your group as punters, civilians, clients, non-combatants, and not before long, collateral damage. Pretty soon, these others lose all individuality, looked upon as worse than animals, more like insects, and no one can empathise with a swarm. You can herd these people into pens, police them different, judge them differently, lie to them, lie about them, deny their voice, take away their rights. You can bully them with sticks. You can tax them into poverty. You can have, you can leave their dead children on beaches. There is a danger to setting yourself apart. You are diminished. You become less than human. You become the underclass. Mm, fantastic. Thanks a lot, everybody. Nice one.